Hello, in this video we're going to look at a total product of labor function and this function will have a cubic form. So suppose that a firm has a following total product function where Q is units of output and L equals units of labor. So here is our total product of labor function. Q is quantity of output, L is units of labor. And what we want to do is derive the marginal product of labor function. And to do that, we are going to take the derivative of the total product function with respect to labor. And so we get the following result. The derivative of 64L is just 64. The derivative of 4L squared, we're going to bring down the 2 in front. So it's going to be 2 times 4 now. And then the exponent on this L squared term is going to be L squared minus 1 here in the exponent, so 2 minus 1. We'll simplify this in a, in a minute. And then the final thing we need to take the derivative of is this last term here. I'm going to bring the 3 down in front. 3 is going to be multiplied by 2 thirds. The 3s the will cancel here nicely for us. And then the exponent on this uh, L cubed term is going to be uh, with the derivative 3 minus 1. So simplifying this up, this will be the marginal product of labor from a total product function that has a cubic functional form. Let's do another problem uh, using the same functional form. We want to find out what is the firm's maximum output level. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the marginal product that we just found and we're going to set that result equal to zero and solve for L, units of labor. So here is our marginal product of labor that we found in the last slide and now we're just going to set that equal to zero and we're going to solve this for L. I'm just going to move a few things around here. Uh, just move the, the L squared term out in front and moving the constant here in the back. So we're going to solve for L by using the quadratic formula. Uh, here's the quadratic formula. Um, so a few things about this. B here is going to be this middle term here. It's going to be 8. Uh, B squared will just be 8 squared. And then it's minus 4AC. A is going to be minus 2. And C is the constant. So that's going to be 64. That's one way to remember it too. C is the constant. So C will be 64. And then in the denominator here, it's going to be 2 times A. And again, remember, A here is minus 2. So making those substitutions, B is 8, A is minus 2, and C is 64. And just simplifying here, 8 squared is 64, and then minus 4 times minus 2 times 64 is going to be plus 512. Adding what's, uh, uh, the, adding what's uh, together here under the square root symbol, we get 576. Taking the square root of 576, we get 24. And now we need to do two things. Uh, first thing I'll do is I'll do minus 8 minus 24. That'll be minus 32. So L equals minus 32 divided by minus 4. That is just 8. And then we've got to check the other root here for L. And what I'll do here is I'm going to take minus 8 plus 24. And that's going to be 16. So minus 8 plus 24 is 16. 16 divided by negative 4 is negative 4. And that has no economic meaning, so we can ignore this result. So output will be maximized when L equals 8 when we employ eight units of labor. So maximum output occurs at L equals eight. And what is that output level? So I'm going to take this eight and I'm going to plug it back into our original total product function. So where I have an L, I'll put an eight. And now simplifying this and simplifying it some more our maximum output is almost 427 units. Okay, I hope you found this video helpful.